Hey everyone, Brass Monkey here, and in this video I'll be going over the best strategies for getting kills and taking objectives using mortars. There are two types of mortars, high explosive and airburst. Both are available exclusively on the support class, and both recently underwent some changes in the latest patch. So let's start with what's new. Previously, airburst mortars could be fired for a maximum range of up to 95 meters across level ground. The high explosive shells, on the other hand, had a roughly 20 meter shorter maximum range. Both could of course be used to fire further or shorter depending on the slope of the terrain, but after the recent patch, both now have a roughly 95 meter maximum range on even terrain. Another update is that both the HE and airburst mortars now come with two smoke grenade rounds in addition to their normal five explosive shells. These smoke rounds can be used to great effect to either protect against enemy snipers or provide relief from well-positioned enemy armor. Another strategy I recommend is to equip two gas grenades with your mortars. Throw both gas grenades near the enemy's advancement path towards an objective, then launch your smoke grenades from your mortars just beyond the gas clouds. This will obfuscate the gas clouds and the smoke will mix together with the gas, making a brutal surprise for unsuspecting enemies who think they are just entering into smoke. Then use your explosive mortar rounds to finish off enemies who are wounded by the gas. You will also want to throw down a supply crate before placing your mortars. This will ensure that once you run out of rounds, you will have a new set of mortars ready to go. And if you're having trouble getting the mortars to replenish right away, try firing one mortar, then stepping off them briefly, and then finish firing the remaining four. This allows you to keep the pressure on the enemy team by replenishing rounds quickly. Following the newest patch, mortars also require a bit more time to zero in before reaching their maximum accuracy. It is not necessary to wait for the red dot to appear before firing, especially if using the airburst shells, but I do recommend waiting for the maximum accuracy if you're using the high explosive shells. This is because the blast radius of the HE mortars is considerably smaller, giving less room for error. As with everything in Battlefield 1, teamwork is essential. Two or more mortar units working together can provide tremendous support for your team to defend against enemy advances or break through an enemy line. Choosing the right shell type is also important. Airburst rounds are great for weakening large groups of advancing enemies and can be critical to winning game modes such as operations, but do only a maximum of 65 damage against infantry, making them a two-shot kill against everyone besides significantly wounded enemies. Alternatively, the HE rounds are a great tool for taking out snipers without exposing yourself, and a direct hit can deal between 15 and 25% of a tank's health in a single shot. Lastly, be mindful of which game modes and maps you equip mortars on. Argon Forest has dense tree cover and will cause many of your shots to explode mid-air before reaching their target. If you really want to experiment with the mortars, use them on open maps like Foul Fortress or Suez, both of which can be played back-to-back -back with 64 players in the Oil of Empires Operation game mode. Using mortars on Conquest is typically not as effective as either Operations or Rush, but can still be a good tool in the right hands. Firing a mortar gives you a bird's eye view of the battlefield, so if you are trying to take an objective, use the mortars to relay enemy positions to your teammates, even if those enemies are behind cover and cannot be spotted. Even if you're not partied up, you can still use this tactic to get a good idea of how many enemies are defending a position before you rush in. If you're interested in all of the best Battlefield 1 strategies, in-depth weapon statistics like damage, time to kill, recoil charts, and more, then you may want to check out the Ultimate Utility app for your smartphone. I've placed a download link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.